Hello everyone and welcome to a new weekend vlog. I hope you've all had a wonderful week. It's a fairly sunny morning here. It was really sunny just a minute ago and now it started to cloud over a little bit. So fingers crossed the sun comes out again because I'm looking forward to getting out and about a bit today. Mum and I want to go to Helmsley, which is a really attractive looking town um, that we've sort of driven through before but never explored properly. And I spotted that they have this rather charming looking bookshop. So I really want to go and look at the bookshop. There's also a pretty walled garden in the area. It's meant to have a nice cafe. So I think we might want to try the cafe out, see what that's like. And if we have time, we'll go on to Revue Abbey, which is really beautiful. We've been there before. We took my dad when he visited in June and it was very atmospheric. Yorkshire is so special because of the number of old abbeys around. I mean, Fountains Abbey near us is incredible, but there are lots to see. Um, Whitby, obviously, too, is probably the most famous, along with Fountains Abbey. So I'm looking forward to having a bit of a day out and exploring, which will be lovely. If you're thinking my hair is looking slightly different, by the way, it is. I actually had my hair done earlier in the week, which was lovely. <laughs> Such a nice experience, and I got it coloured for the first time. I got it properly coloured for years because I've been doing it myself at home with just those you know, hair dyes out of a packet. And I started just before lockdown because as anyone who lives in London will know, it's so, so expensive to get your hair properly colored in London. So I started doing it myself. And then of course, lockdown happened. So I just kept on doing it myself. And I just chose a sort of dark brown dye to match my hair but my hair's actually not it's a bit lighter than how it was coming out dyed and I felt it was just getting darker and darker and also sadly I am getting more grey coming in now um, as I'm getting older so I was dying to get it just properly and professionally done and my mum had discovered a wonderful hairdresser's it's called Cabello Hairdressing in Boroughbridge which by the way is a really charming town um, near to where we live and Julie is our hairdresser she started with mum and mum loved her so much that now I'm going to and she's just the nicest lady and she did the most wonderful job on my hair. I'm so, so thrilled. It's really natural looking. It looks a lot like how my hair just used to look naturally with just a bit lighter highlights going through it. I got like an overall colour and then just a few highlights threaded through to lighten my hair a little bit. And I couldn't be happier. I think it's the best colouring job I've ever had done. And she's so reasonable. It's amazing. And she's just so lovely, so experienced. So I can't tell you how happy I am to have found such a nice hairdresser in the area. And to not have to colour my own hair <laughs> was absolutely ruining our towels too. So um, yeah, I'm really, really happy. So Yes, I've got an extra spring in my step this week, I think, because of that. Um, but also, just before we go, I'll catch you up on Thunderclap, which I very, very nearly finished now. Oh my goodness, I love it. It's so good. I mean, I've said already what an amazing writer Laura Cumming is, but... She writes about art and life and how the two intertwine so well. If you're interested in Dutch art in particular, then I would say you absolutely have to read this. It's fascinating and her whole perspective on Dutch art is so interesting and the way she challenges any preconceived ideas you might have about Dutch art or some of the established theories on Dutch art. I feel she really does the art justice and I love Dutch art but I don't know a huge amount about it. So I've been really enjoying learning more and looking at so many beautiful artworks. Um, by Vermeer and I mean all sorts of old art, um, old masters and 
learning so much it makes me really want to go to Amsterdam again I haven't been since I was 18 which is a really long time ago um but this makes you really want to go and it's just so well written so fascinating it makes me look at art differently too because she does a real detailed examination of a lot of artworks that she shares in the book and I love how many illustrations are included in this um, and the way that she looks so closely and picks up the most meaningful details but details that you know the lay person just wouldn't maybe pick up on um, it brings you so much more understanding and appreciation of the paintings and makes you look at art differently and look at the world differently too so absolutely loving this very nearly finished um it's taken me a bit longer to read this um than i thought it would mainly i think because i've just been so busy <laughs> and it's also the type of book that i think one does read a little bit slower because you really want to take in everything that she's saying and you do tend to pause and really look at the paintings yourself and refer back to what she's writing about them and look at the details that she's you know pointing out so I think that slows you down a bit on the reading but it's so good I really recommend it yeah if you're interested in Dutch art then I would say this is a must read so hoping to finish that very very soon but better get going now because I, I really hope we keep the sun with us and I'm excited for a bit of a day out today so I'll bring you along. So we've arrived at the Helmsley Walled Garden, which has such a pretty cafe. We're sitting under a little canopy of grapevines, which is really lovely. And I can't wait to order. Mum's happy with her iced I coffee. Am. Looks I love good. A nice latte. Mm. Yeah, you got an iced elderflower. Mm. Yes, I did elderflower drink that looks really cool and refreshing it does how's that oh, that's good i always love this mm. good it's nice here isn't mm -hmm. it lovely we've got our food coming so yeah. we've got two buddha bowls so that should be rather nice yes so i'm looking forward to that you must be starving such I a am. little breakfast you'll be ready for this <laughs> yeah i definitely am but it's lovely here it's really charming cheers <laughs> mm. Mm, sparkling elderflower. Very it's very nice. yummy. <laughs> mm. Our lunch has arrived. I've got goat's cheese and chicken with a bowl, which looks so so yummy. What did you order? I ordered smut mackerel and beetroot and pesto, which also looks delicious. Mmm, it does look mm. really good. <laughs> Let's dive in. Okay. <laughs> So we really enjoyed the lunch, it didn't we? It was delicious. Yeah, we yeah. scoffed that. It was really good. <laughs> it was, and it was a lovely summery sort of lunch. It was nice. And the sun has come out. That's lovely. Which is blue really sky, nice. sun. Yeah, perfect. blue skies, white fluffy clouds. Yeah, definitely perfect. So we're going to go around the ward garden yeah, now. It is nice. Yes, we've been once before, and yeah. it was very nice. You don't actually have to pay to access the garden to come to the cafe, which is always good to know. Yeah, but um, but we do we, like going around the ward. We garden. like going around yeah. the garden, so we did actually um, pay to go around today. So yeah. I've got my. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's right, B2, somewhere. Yeah. I don't know where mine's gone now. Oh no. Is it oh, it's probably off? on my jacket. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. <laughs> Phew. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're just going to finish our drinks and then go have a nice wander around in the garden. Perfect. <laughs>
What are you reading? Oh, I'm reading a Daphne du Maurier um, short stories, the, the Breaking the Wind. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> it's very good. They're always very good. I've just wandered around the garden. It's really beautiful. beautiful. Yes. Oh, lovely. Do you know, the hollyhocks over there are spectacular. Really yes. Are you just looking at them? Yeah, they're really beautiful. They they're quite spectacular. I love, I love hollyhocks. They're such an old-fashioned flower. And yet they're always so charming against a fence. Yes, they really are. So we had a lovely time, didn't we? Lovely visit, it really was. And yes. we escaped. It feels a little bit humid, almost like it could rain any second, but yes. no raindrops. <laughs> so we're all right so far. So far, we're going to go along to the Abbey and fingers crossed it doesn't rain. Yes. We'll have to see. But the garden was so beautiful. There was yeah. more out than I expected there to yes. be in a way. There was Me so much too. to see. Um, often I think, August can look dusty and a little yes. bit overpassed, yes. but it, actually everything looked lovely. Yes. It must have been all that cool weather and rain <laughs> we had has saved the gardens well, a bit. Well, very true. Yes. Yes. It's lovely to see the apples coming oh, along. Yes, and, and the plums, and the plums were, very were looking ripe, amazing. Looking, they? Yes, yes, they were. And the dahlias starting, there were some really pretty ones there. Oh. So it was lovely. Yeah, I had a lovely time. I sat and read my book, which I always love doing. This is why I have a Kindle with me at all all time yes <laughs> <laughs> and you you were very busy going around filming too but it was yeah. lovely just to have some time together to sit and enjoy our books yes it was really lovely mm -hmm. um so yes fingers crossed the rain holds off <laughs>
So we're back home. It Hello. was a lovely day. Wasn't oh, we it? had a lovely day. I can't believe it's after five though. Can you? It's, no, it's the day's it's gone. It's five thirty. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to sitting outside. Yes. It's the first time for ages. Actually, we'll be able to sit outside. Yeah. And I think we're going to have a glass. I'll show you some of the shopping spoils. Yes. From that's the day, fun, and isn't it? this is one of them. Yes. Because we got this. We love this. Um, Oh, I can't remember how you say it. And and a, a, someone on YouTube once commented, telling me you don't say Belvoir, which you'd think which you you'd would. think you'd you would. Yeah. You say something that totally doesn't like <laughs> sound English, like how this do. <laughs> doesn't sound like how this is spelt, but it, at all. But their drinks are lovely. Yeah. So I don't remember. Sorry, <laughs> how you say this? But I really like their drinks. This is non-alcoholic peach Bellini. Oh, I really want a glass of this. Oh, you deserve it today. <laughs> She's been filming like mad as we've gone around. Yes. So. Um, so, and this is cold, which yes. is nice. So we're going to pour a glass of that and go outside yeah. and have a drink um, just before supper, which I'm looking forward to. And we picked up another Belvoir, but it's not really Belvoir. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sparkling elderflower rosé. Um, and no, get... Anne Rose. Oh, Anne oh, Rose. Sorry. Sorry. It's, it's not rosy, so they're not an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, it'll be lovely. Uh, elderflower rose, yes, that sounds yes. so nice. It does, doesn't it? Um, yes, so I can't wait. Yes. Um, I think, I'll get the, nice. I think I'll have the peach bellini though. Yeah, me that too actually, really that nice. sounds very nice. And then we also just picked up some hot chocolate. It was a really nice deli. In, yes, it was Hounsley. right by the bookshop. Mm. Thank goodness the mum remembered because I'd completely <laughs> forgotten about, well, afterwards about going like, to the oh, bookshop. Well, going to the bookshop and you're like, yes, I, I can't believe I... But fortunately we were still there and we could just drive. Yes, so, so we nice. went to the bookshop before going on to um, the Abbey yeah. and it was a really nice little bookshop. It was lovely. It? They actually had a big selection. They had an upstairs, which yes, I Yes, it, yeah, it was quite, yeah. quite big. And yeah. I did and want you know to support us. them, so I got a few things which yeah. I'll show you. So, ah yes, okay, well, there's a bit of a story behind this. So first up I got this Yorkshire, a literary landscape, an anthology. And I actually already have this, but I've bought this as a giveaway for my Instagram um subscription followers so you may know that instagram have started to roll out to some instagram users the ability to offer a little subscription service where when you pay to subscribe you get extra content and mm. i get to decide what that content is and i going to be some treats <laughs> yes there are going to be some yeah. treats and i'm making it a really reasonable price point, I think, for this. It's £2.79 a month. And my subscribers for that are getting exclusive giveaways, which I'll be doing. So this will be the first one. Yeah, and we'll make them international too. Oh yeah, so there'll be, nice be obviously everyone. international giveaways. Yeah. And what you're also really getting is my bookish almanac. So yeah. every month I'm going to do posts that will be exclusive to these subscribers um, with literary dates and events. That's and exciting. Quotes. I, mean, I know, <laughs> I month. know. Um, and yeah, just a lovely bookish almanac yeah. because I thought that would be a really fun thing. Now I am also going to be launching uh, an extra special membership, which is not Instagram based, which mm. is... Um, based on my own platform, which I am putting my heart and soul into at the moment. I'm really excited about it's it. And I think special. I think it's really different yeah. from anything Don't I've seen. Don't you think they complement too? But they do, yeah. they really complement each other. So yeah. um, you could subscribe to both or to one or the other, but yeah. they aren't really complementary. But that isn't launched quite yet. No, yeah, but, but you know, first coming. first little announcement here, and it is coming, and I'm so excited. I'm really excited about it. Yes, but I'm also really excited about my Instagram one. So if you are an Instagram follower, yeah. then then check it out on my Instagram. And yeah, 
you've seen it here. <laughs> First giveaway. You should say it's the bookcase one too. Oh yes, it's yeah. my. <laughs> yeah. It's a good job your brain is turned on today. <laughs> oh, I've had usual, so much it's, going yeah, on. Yeah, she has. Normally it's her that's telling me. I'm just in overdrive, and you're having to remember things. <laughs> oh, yeah. Usual. So it's my Miranda's bookcase Instagram. Thank you. <laughs> the time. That's what mums are for. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I got that in the bookshop. Yeah. And oh, I think it should be nice for people, hopefully, to know where that came from. Yes. Honestly. Yes. And then I picked up um, this, which I've been really wanting. It's A Wreath for the Enemy by Pamela Frankow. And this is the newly released uh, Daunt Books edition. And I, I really have wanted this. Yeah. It's a summer read. Um, it sounds very summery. It's set on the French Riviera, I Oh, think. lovely. Uh, summer summer over there. <laughs> I know. I love Yorkshire, but there is the French. <laughs> well, it'd probably be too hot oh, for us. Yes, so yeah, yeah, absolutely. probably wilt and yes. I can yeah. read about it. So yes. that's good. So I was thrilled to get that. Yeah. And then this was something I saw and really wanted. Yes, I haven't even looked at this properly yet because no. you picked it up. <laughs> I did. Um, the Helmsley Chronicles, David Wilburn, a yes. diary so celebrating rural and church life, a remedy for the uncertainties of the modern world. That does sound really nice. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Have a look on the back, I thought it looked really nice. The Helmsley Chronicles collects the best of David's diaries. So David Wilburn was the vicar of Helmsley. Yeah. Um, and it says they're substantially edited and bolstered with new material. Gently celebrating rural and church life, it is, it is a wonderful foil to all the uncertainties and insecurities of the modern world and church in a style both humorous and poignant that will delight readers of Yorkshire diarists such as James Herriot mm -hmm. and Gervais Finn. Isn't that lovely? Yes, that sounds so nice. Well, I do miss it's Ronald Blythe. Yes, yes. I know. And I think, oh, this is lovely. I think we'll really enjoy that. Yes. That's so great. Um, and then I got the new yeah. Faber Poetry Diary with the Liberty cover, which I was very excited to see. I get this every year I have for the past three years now, I think. I think so. Um, almost, I think almost since they start doing the, since they started doing the Liberty covers. So yeah. I think this one's gorgeous. They're I have to take the wrapper off. to um, have as well, aren't they? Because they're so gorgeous. They are. I, don't, I haven't got rid of any of the old ones yet, <laughs> which won't, won't be a problem after a while, but they're so attractive. Well, and, and, I, nice love, and, and I love the poems inside yeah, too. Yeah, that's really nice. Um, so that's what we got when we were in Helmsley. Yeah. Oh, and then then yes, we got these, forgot which to, came in the post. Yes, yes, I forgot to tell you to tell you about them earlier. So the first one I got is uh, this: "A Summer to Die" <laughs> by Lois Lowry. <laughs> I think it's going to be a bit of a tearjerker. Yes. Mm. Well, I got it because um, my friends who visited from London last week raved about this book to me because they were looking at all of my vintage books because um, they like that kind of book too. And they said, Have, had you ever read this one? Yeah. And I said, no. And I was surprised because um, it's American. Obviously, Lois Lowry is an American writer. Yeah, she wrote The Giver, which many of you might have studied yes. at school. Yeah, But yeah. I, I had never heard of this one. I think this was her first novel, actually. Oh, well, that's interesting. Yes. And... Yeah. Um, my friends love love this, so they, they do said that they cried and cried. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. You it's know me, I'll be, I'll be like sobbing. Yeah, it's, it's about cry. two sisters, and I, I think I can say this because it's not yeah. a spoiler, it's really obvious yes. from the title, like the whole kind of premise yeah. of the book. Um, one of the sisters dies, I think she yeah. has leukemia. So it's nice that it's moved on and leukemia is so often treatable in teenagers now. Yes. You have to think that yes. when you're reading it. Yes, so when well, my friends told me about it, I was a bit like, really? Is it really that good? It sounds awfully sad. Yeah. They were like, no, it's also like really life affirming and amazing. So I'm yeah. sort of like thinking, okay, well I'll try it. Still slightly And then we did our normal it. thing. When we don't really know with a book, we often go for something that's not too expensive to pick up. So, yeah, so we this bought one is a really um, cheap version. So it yeah. is a bit it is a bit tatty and there is like a mar marker pen, for instance, on this. But it's still but nice. if I really like it, yeah. then I would look to upgrade if if I, if it turns out to be a book I love, yeah. then that's when I would start looking looking to upgrade yeah. and get a and nice edition. it goes edition. on my list where I yes, look where you look, look for. Yes, because you're 
the book whisperer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, when it's something we're not sure we'll love, especially like a vintage book, then yeah. because there's some very expensive editions of this out there, we just found a cheap one. Yeah. Um, and that's generally what they do, for, what we do. If we're not sure, yeah. we buy a cheap copy to start, and then we decide whether that's fine or if it's something we love, then then we'll try and upgrade. Yeah. Um, but anyway. I'm looking forward to reading that. And then um, I also picked up this, again, cheap secondhand copy, <laughs> um, but it's Class by Jenny, Jen, oh, I can't speak right. today. Jenny. <laughs> Jenny Colgan writing as Jane Beaton. And these I've heard described as sort of Marilee Towers for grown-ups. Yeah. And that hooked me. Yeah. So I really want to give these a go. They're set in a boarding school in Cornwall. Tick, tick. Yeah, tick, yeah. tick for us. Yeah. And I think they obviously follow the lives of the teachers as well as the students because they're adult books. But they just sound like they'll hopefully be fun. I yeah. think it's a trilogy. Is it a trilogy? It is a yes. trilogy. Um, so I this is the first in the series yeah. anyway. I think one's called Rules and Lessons is my... Oh, well, I guess that would make sense. And the start yeah. with class. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, as in classroom, I assume. Yeah. Um, so, yes, I just thought it sounded like it'd be worth a try. Yeah. So, those were our um, Abe book <laughs> purchases. Yes, and I think, yeah. That's, we're ready for that's that drink. Really ready. Go out. Really ready for my peach blini. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yes, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.
Hello again, so it's the next day. I've had lunch and I went for a walk to the garden that's near us and cut a few flowers, these beautiful dahlias. I just love all the pinks, it's so pretty. And I cut a few sweet peas which mm, smell amazing. It's a lovely warm day today actually, it's like summer is having a last hurrah here in the UK which is nice because I think it pretty much rained all through July. So that was really nice just to get a bit of fresh air and I wanted to get a few little flowers too because I want to take photos this afternoon. I have quite a lot to do and I have to take some photos, um, some for my bookish almanac subscribers on Instagram. So I'll be doing that. I'm also just going to have a sip of my elderflower and rose drink that we got yesterday. Mmm. Oh, that's so nice. I had the peach blini last night, which was really good, but I think I might like this even more. Mm. That's lovely, so refreshing. Oh, really delicious. <laughs> and then I had a couple of books arrive this morning that I thought I'd tell you about, and a couple that came earlier in the week that I forgot to share yesterday. So, um, the British Library very kindly sent me their latest British Library Women Writers book, which is another Elizabeth von Arnhem, which I'm very happy about. It's Introduction to Sally. I read this last year and really enjoyed it. I have an old hardback of the book, but I love this new edition that they've done. I think that's really attractive. And I really enjoyed this one last year. It's... Um, very funny in many ways. I remember laughing out loud over it, but it's so much about the male gaze as well and how a beautiful woman is uh, manipulated by so many people around her, or at least they try to manipulate her. Um, anyway, it's one I remember really enjoying, so I'm really glad that it's back in print. And then I absolutely love these Harper Muse editions of books. And I got one of the latest, this really sweet edition of Winnie the Pooh. I think the cover is so attractive, but it does have the Ernest Shepherd illustrations all through it, which is lovely because I wouldn't want to be without those. So I think it's so nicely done, this one. It's got attractive end papers as well, and the gold edged pages are lovely too. But yes, I just think that's really gorgeous. And then um, Harper Collins kindly sent me a couple of books. One is this one, Growing at Green Greenfields, no Greenfields, by Diana Yates. And I've had a little look through this one already. It's so beautiful. There are lovely photographs all through it. This is really one for the garden lovers because it's all about a year spent in a garden in Scotland, growing a garden, and there are lots of tips for what to plant and grow all through the year, and a few little crafty activities to do as well, and a few recipes. It's also a book about recovering from, well, an unspeakable loss, really, a terribly tragic loss. Um, that happened to the author and her family at the start of lockdown and about how she found a way to keep going um, through gardening. So it's really poignant, really moving as well um, and looks like a really beautiful book. And then um, I have quite a few in this series by Naomi Slade and photographed by Georgiana Lane all about different types of flowers. They've done hydrangeas and dahlias and tulips, I think, and lilac, roses, and this is one on ranunculus, which is really beautiful. So I just love these books. They are exquisitely photographed by Georgiana Lane, and I didn't actually realise that ranunculus are part of the buttercup family. They're all the type of buttercup. <laughs> so
So um, I didn't know that, so that was really interesting, but I adore ranunculars and I was really happy to have this one added to my collection of, of these floral books. So I do have quite a bit of work to get on with this afternoon, so I'm going to just finish sipping this lovely refreshing drink and then I'm going to get on with everything. But I hope you've had a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much as always for watching my video. Extra big thanks to those of you who pressed the super thanks button on my last video. An extra big thanks to those of you who have subscribed to my bookish almanac on Instagram already. I can't wait to share more with you in there. I hope you're all having a wonderful August and I'll see you again very soon. Goodbye.